Hi guys! Welcome back to Mofo Christ channel. <laughs> it's been a minute, I know, um, but I am very, very, very glad to be back. Um, I hope you guys have been having um, an amazing week so far. Um, and I thank you for coming back to watch. I really do appreciate you. Um, and may God bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so yes, let's get right into it. This week we are going to be talking about um, something that I'm kind of dealing with myself. Okay, so like this is also a learning process for me too. Okay, so um, you know how sometimes you want to do something that you know is not really good for you. Okay, but you really, 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 really want to do that thing, right? Okay, and so you're looking for some kind of excuse, some kind of validation, you know, to make yourself feel like, okay, you know, it's okay to do it, right? Um, and so you want to get advice from people, right? So you have two groups of friends. One group of friends, you know, I mean, those are friends that will basically tell you to go ahead and do this thing you want to do. Like, you know, they are going to be like, yeah, go do it. What's the big deal? You only live once. Life is once. Have your freedom. Freedom for all. You know, those kind of friends that, you know, um, whether it's good or bad, they're just going to egg you on and tell you to go ahead and do this thing. Right? And then you have this other friend, you know, your sister Mary, sister Agatha friend, <laughs> that you know that um, she will tell you the truth, the very blunt truth, the biblical truth, you know. Um, but you don't really want to hear that kind of truth right now, right? Because it's boring, you know, there's no fun in it. So you just, you just want someone that will validate you and tell you, you know what, go ahead and do, you know, this thing you want to do, it's not a big deal, right? So at that point, who do you listen to? Okay, um, for many people, you know, you will listen to the group of friends that will basically tell you, sure, go do it, you know, because they are going to give you reasons why you are able to do it, even though you all know that, you know, that's not the right thing for you to be doing at that moment, right? So, we're going to be talking about um, this kind of scenario today. Amen. Um, so yes, our Bible text is going to be taken from First Kings chapter 22 from verse 1 to 40 now that is 40 verses long so i'm not going to read the whole thing but i will just highlight some um verses in the passage but i really really do implore you to go ahead and read it it's a very interesting and very insightful bible passage um and i know that you will enjoy it too okay so go read it all right so what basically happened in this bible passage was that um, the king of israel king Ahab which um kind of backstory on king he have he was this king that basically did what he wanted to do okay whether it's um aligned with the word of god or not he still did what he wanted to do he worshipped idols you know he turned people from god and all that okay so king ahab wanted to um basically kind of like seize the land okay and that land was called ramoth gilead and he wanted to seize the land you know like just kind of like a war i guess and get the land and so he called his friend king jehoshaphat um who was like the king of another place and basically asked for like an alliance so that they can both go to the battle i guess and um seize this land and so king jehoshaphat his friend was like okay no problem i can help you there's no big deal you know what is mine is also yours so i'll help you um but one thing we must do first and what we must do first is seek the face of god and that can be found in verse 5, okay? And it says, But Jehoshaphat also said to the king of Israel, First seek the counsel of the Lord. And that brings us to our topic for today. And our topic for today is, But first, what did God say? Amen. But first, what did God say? Amen. So we're going to go back to that. But um, to continue the story, um, so basically King Jehoshaphat, um, said they needed to seek the face of God. So King Ahab called, you know, 400 prophets, 400 of them, um, to basically prophesy what will happen if they go on this battle, right? And all these 400 prophets, they all said, oh, sure, go ahead. God has given you the victory. You know, go ahead and, you know, go on this battle. So King Jehoshaphat was like, okay. But are these all the prophets? Like, is there any other prophets that we can ask, right? 
and so King Ahab was like well yeah there's one prophet but we already know what he's going to say he always has bad news everything he says is always doom 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 like there's no need to call him we already know what he's going to say like he never has anything good to say and so King Jehoshaphat was like you know no we still have to ask him so they went and called this prophet called prophet Micaiah was the name of this prophet and prophet Micaiah was you know this kind of prophet that he basically said what God told him to say you know he wasn't that prophet that would um, change his mind for the king or say what the king wanted him to say you know instead he did what God asked him to do okay um, because when the messengers of the king uh, went to meet prophet Micaiah you know they basically told him see all these 400 other prophets they already said something so make sure that your story also aligns with what they say and then prophet Micaiah said in verse um, 14 replying them he said as surely as the Lord lives I can only tell him what the Lord tells me you know so he wasn't going to lie and so they got to the king and um, basically the king asked him you know whether he should go on the journey or not and King Prophet Micaiah was like you know no at the end of the day like long story short he was like you know it's not a good idea for you to go on this journey you know, he basically told him, he said he saw a vision where um, God was like, you know, having like sort of like a meeting with all these heavenly bodies. And they were talking about who is going to um, lead King Ahab to this land he wanted to seize where he would die, you know. And a spirit basically came forward and said that he's going to do the job. Let's, let's read it. It says, um, let's see, let's start from verse 19, okay. Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the multitudes of heaven standing around him on his right and on his left. And the Lord said, Who will entice Ahab into attacking Ramoth Gilead and going to his death there? One suggested this and another that. Finally, his spirit came forward, stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. By what means the Lord asked, I will go out and be a deceiving spirit in the mouths of all of his prophets. He said, you will succeed in enticing him, said the Lord. Go and do it. So basically, this is like saying that God gave a spirit, you know, the authority to go and deceive prophets. Okay. But Prophet Micaiah was this man of God that, you know, he, he knew what God was saying. Like he was a true man of God. So he could decipher, you know, what is true and what is wrong. And he saw this vision. So even though 400 prophets were saying, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Prophet Micaiah, you know, a true prophet of God, he said, no, like, don't go on this journey because you will die if you go on the journey. You know, and so King Ahab was like, yeah, whatever, you know, I already knew he was going to say it anyway. Like, it's not like it's a, a new story. Like, he already knew he was going to tell him not to go. So basically, he ignored the prophets, went on this journey, and died. He died in the journey, just like Prophet Micaiah said, you know, in the battle. So that's the story. Now, what is the point of all this long story I just, you know, said, right? Three things I want us to basically learn today. First is, seek the face of God. What did God say? About that thing you're about to do, what did God say? Concerning that job you're about to take, what did God say? Concerning that relationship you're about to start, what did God say? Concerning that journey you're about to embark upon, what did God say? For everything that you do in this life, you need to first of all ask God, what is his opinion on it? You know, ask God, God, should I or should I not? Very important. In this Bible passage, King Jehoshaphat, he knew the importance of asking God before he went on this battle. It wasn't that they didn't have the resources. I mean, come on, they were going to join the resources of two great kingdoms together. So obviously they had the resources. They had the men. They had the army to go on this journey. But King Jehoshaphat knew that the most important thing, was whether God's hand was with them during this journey or not. Because at the end of the day, if God says no, even if you have a million soldiers, it will still fail. If God says that the battle is not going to be won, it's not going to be won, regardless of the resources that you have. You know, and King Jehoshaphat understood this very simple principle. Okay, he knew that God can make you win a battle with only two people. 
if he says yes it's yes it's not about the resources you have and so in our lives what what are we seeking the face of God for are we seeking the face of God for just the important things or the things that we don't think we can do by ourselves so you know that okay for this particular problem I can solve it on my own because you know I have the resources I've done it before versus something small or something huge that you know you don't have any idea of there you go meet God for no that's not what we're supposed to do for every single thing we do on this earth from the moment you wake up to the time you sleep you need to ask for the face of God for every single thing you do ask for the face of God because your human knowledge will tell you yeah you know how to do it you've done it before you have the resources you have the money you have the people you have the network go ahead and do it but you need to know the knowledge of God because guess what? He's the God that sees today and sees tomorrow. So why won't you take advice from the person who already knows what is going to happen? Amen. Second thing I want us to learn is listen. Listen. It's not just about hearing what God says. I mean, that is one part. That is a very important part. But more importantly is for you to listen and obey. Listen and obey what it is that God said. Okay, you can have an instruction, you can have a manual for something, right? Let's say you buy a, a, a new game or a new, um, you know, computer or laptop or something, and it comes with a manual. Until you use the manual, the manual is useless to you, right? And so it is in our lives. When God tells you to do something, if you don't do it, you are just, it's, it's useless. The information is useless to you because if you are not going to use it, then it has not benefited you in any way. Right? So it's even better for you not to even use it, to you, for you not to even ask for God's opinion in the first place than for you to ask and then not follow what God says you should do. Amen. So the important part is for you to follow. So if God says yes, then yes. If God says no, then no. And I know that it is hard sometimes to go according to what you know God is telling us because we feel like mm, that's boring, that's hard, that's tough, that's longer. You know, that's more stressful. In your own human understanding, that's what you think. But guess what? That is the way that leads to success. That is the way that leads to victory. And so that is the way that you should be taken. Amen. So more importantly, like I said, is to listen and to obey what God says. It's not when God says no to something, you now start checking. Mm, maybe I didn't hear right, you know. Mm, maybe I didn't hear. Well, we all know how we listen to God. We all know how God talks to us. You know, for some people like me, it's really about peace. You know, if I have peace in my spirit about a certain situation, I know that it's probably God talking to me. You know, so you know how you listen to God. And if you don't know how God speaks to you, this is the time for you to go to God in prayer and try to establish a relationship to, with God so that you can know when He's talking to you. Amen. Now, thirdly, what I want us to learn is um, that the spirit of discernment is very important. Okay? We need to have the spirit of discernment. And that is not something that you can just learn. You can read it somewhere and then you have the spirit of discernment. No, that is something you pray for. You pray for the Holy Spirit to give you the spirit of discernment. Because guess what? In this Bible passage, what happened? God gave a spirit the authority to go ahead and deceive prophets. Amen. So just imagine you are a normal Christian and you know there's this prophet or somebody telling you to go do something but you know this is not really the word of God and you cannot decipher you cannot discern that okay this is not really God speaking then just imagine how many um, mistakes you will make or how you will be on the wrong path Amen. We have to have the spirit of discernment. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you should not listen to, you know, your pastors or prophets or whatnot because there are people that have been given the gift of, you know, seeing the future and prophesying. What I am saying is when someone tells you something, please go ahead and check the Bible. Check if it aligns with the word of God. If anybody is telling you to do something that does not align with the word of God, then please, you know that obviously it's not, it's not right because it's not aligning with the word of God. Amen. And then, you know, we also have to have a relationship with God, you know, such that when someone tells you this is what God says about your life, you can go to God on your own. You can go to God personally and say, God, is it really you telling me to do this thing or not? Amen. Spirit of discernment. Just imagine if all these prophets told the king Ahab the wrong thing and prophet Micaiah couldn't tell him the right thing. Amen. Just imagine if all 401 prophets of them couldn't decipher what was right and what was wrong. Amen. Even though Ahab still went ahead and, 
you know, follow the wrong advice regardless. Amen. So we need to have the spirit of discernment to tell, you know, when it is God that is speaking and when it is just our mind or our desires or our wishes that are speaking. We need to be able to differentiate between the voice of God and our own flesh, our voice, uh, the flesh inside of us. Let us be able to decipher. And that is something we need to pray to God for. Amen. So I hope you have learned something today. Um, first of all, like I said before, in summary, um, seek the face of God for everything that you do on this earth. Secondly, it is not enough to just seek the face of God. You have to listen and obey what God has told you to do. Amen. And thirdly, we have to pray for the spirit of discernment for us to be able to hear clearly and for us to be able to, to differentiate between the voice of God and the voice of you know our flesh or our desires or whatnot. Amen. Amen. So yes, that's all we have for this week. I hope that you've learned something. Um, our email is moreforchrist at gmail.com. Please go ahead and email me whether your comments or whether you want um, us to talk about a particular topic or the other. Um, we do have an Instagram page and it's more for Christ. So go and follow. Um, also, don't forget to subscribe, share with your friends. And um, thank you for watching. And I'll see you all next week. Until then. Remain blessed.